you can see now we're quickly speeding up. The earth is pulling us inwards and uh, we're now past halfway. You can see there is uh, Asia and Africa and South America and the United States, sorry, North America uh, will come into view soon. Uh, this just gives you a size of the earth. Uh, it's pulling us in now. We're at about 2,000 miles per hour now. And just earlier, we were at 350. And uh, on 1,000 times normal speed, you can see the Earth is rotating. There's the South and North Atlantic Oceans. And very soon, we'll have our mid-course correction maneuver. I still don't understand why it's, it's putting us on the moon map. because the Earth is, is going to become the strongest gravitational source any moment now. And when that happens, we're going to make for a mid-course correction maneuver. 2,270 miles per hour. Again, here's the orbital speed around the sun, 28,810 meters per second, and the altitude, 149,000, uh, no, 149 million kilometers. That's it now. Uh, we're going to do our mid-course correction maneuver. Uh, Earth is the central body, which means we can now um, face it. retrograde uh, for this burn. We should now be visible on the... Why are we not yet visible on the Earth map? We are both closer to the Earth and have more gravity. Actually, uh, are we? No, maybe that's what it is. It's considering the closest body. So we're actually closer to the moon. Um, but it's much smaller now. It's actually uh, looks almost as small as it normally does in the sky. So this will be a quick burn. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to um, decrease our burn until uh, the periapsis altitude. And just because I don't want to do math and adding vectors and stuff, we're going to burn until the periapsis altitude that's altitude. Yes, that's altitude. Gets down to one million, uh, or sorry, one megameter or 1,000 kilometers. Uh, keeping an eye on the uh, argument of periapsis, which is 165 degrees. So we don't want that to move. And so what I'm actually going to do is feel around for where that is. So I'm going to burn in whichever direction isn't going to change the argument of periapsis. It's going to be right around here. That's rather interesting. We're more retrograde than prograde, uh, yet the altitude is increasing. That's interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and counter that by doing it exactly opposite. Because a lot of times, things are right, it's just they need to be done oppositely. 
let's try this. Okay, so uh, we're going to turn retrograde now. I can't stand it when the autopilot just doesn't feel like rotating the, uh, just flashing between 10 and 1x to get this done faster. Alright, now I need to figure out which direction uh, we'll be heading around the, uh, actually, if I just face opposite the earth perfectly, that should be it. Okay, I'm going to burn here, no matter what. You know, this is... Uh, oh, that's why. It's because we're back in the uh, old area again. Okay, uh, let's try 90 degrees from that. That was 140, so let's try uh, 230. not like how the argument of periapsis is changing. We're just going to burn retrograde because I, I can't figure out um, without doing the math plots which direction to move. Okay, I'm going to pause the video now because I really need to I really need to get this right. Okay, so um now I'm telling myself to burn uh towards the earth. I think this is right. Let's try this. Aha, that's doing it. Okay, um, so that's moving the, that's moving the uh, argument of periapsis in the way we want it, but it's not moving um, the periapsis altitude enough. Okay, let's try uh, 70 degrees now. This should offer a... Okay, that's definitely not going to work. Now what's opposite 70? 290. Let's try 290. helping me much. So the problem now is that my, uh, periapsis altitude is where it should be, um, but now the argument of periapsis has changed, which is going to greatly affect where I land.
So what we're going to have to do is just go back to uh, speeding time up and uh, to 1,000 times and just waiting for us to get lower. Ah, finally. For the map to come up. So that then we can figure out what's going to happen with our ground track. Yeah, it currently has us landing over Australia, which is not very, that is not very promising. That is the exact opposite side of the Earth that I wanted to land on. Actually, you know what it's going to do is it's going to make us geosynchronous above a certain point. In fact, you know what? I think we got this off by exactly one day because our geosynchronous point is going to be directly over Cape Canaveral. It's too bad we won't be over the atmosphere when that happens because that would be really handy. There's the beautiful Pacific Ocean again. Uh, we're coming in now. I'm gonna do a quick save because uh, my computer loves to crash the game as soon as the atmosphere comes into view. Now the Earth is growing, uh, which is a very pleasant sight because it is very beautiful compared with the moon. Yeah, that really sucks. We're going to go geosynchronous with the, uh, with the Earth just as we pass over Cape Canaveral. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> next thing we need to do is turn retrograde. And we need to burn until we intercept the atmosphere. We're going to do a, um, a full speed enter. We're only at um, about 5,000 miles per hour. But we'll be at nearly 10 kilometers per second when we hit the tops of the atmosphere. I don't understand why I keep getting this uh, incorrect. Probably because I'm just not spending enough time analyzing it. And as you can see, uh, the Earth is accounting for 80% of the gravity, which means there would be minimal perturbations now. We'll keep it there at 60 kilometers for now. And we're going to lower that just a little bit um, to maybe 55 kilometers, just a tiny bit. So there's 1,000 times normal uh, flow of time. kind of sucks too cuz Cape Canaveral would be in uh, bright sunlight. I feel like there's been there's a phasing problem with with my calculation. Like I'm exactly one day off cuz look, this this could not have been accidental. We we go geosynchronous right next to Cape Canaveral. This is about where I wanted to to land and we're exactly one day off. So there's no way that was accidental. So we're close to the earth now. I'm I'm not going uh, on a thousand times anymore. And uh, it, it really sucks because we would have been able to land in light as opposed to darkness. Whenever we land, it's probably going to be on the opposite side of the Earth, which means it's going to be dark again when we re-enter. Our other option is to uh, burn into the orbit of the Earth and not do the... Uh, the plasma arrow breaking routine. But where's the fun in that?
Yeah, that down there. You see that down there? That's, yeah, that. That's where I wanted to land. I was going to try and land there one time. It's not going to happen. Nope. Yeah, it actually looks like we're gonna land somewhere near Kuwait. I want a, uh, I, I want a nice, uh, back to regular time. That is a beautiful view of Europe. Um, I want a daytime landing, so we're going to go ahead and do it. We're up to the normal uh, 17,000 miles per hour orbit. Hopefully we'll have enough fuel to kill. Actually, we don't need fuel. Um, I'm going to do a semi aero break. We're going to slow down, but not... Ah, we can get the best of both worlds. We'll slow down using the atmosphere, but not all the way. That's perfect. We're totally going to do that. There we go. Returning it to a nice uh, level for our speed. So we're going to turn prograde again. And we'll fly over Europe. Now, I know some of you guys who are watching my videos live in Europe, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn over the Earth now, and we're going to get a nice pan of Europe on 10x. And just look at that speed climb. It's probably going to go all the way to about... It's probably going to go about to 10,000... 300 or 10,500 kilometers per second. Let's go ahead and do a quick save here. So that's to orient anyone. I'm not going to leave this on, so pause the video now and, and orient yourself because I don't want to ruin the view. And again, it's dusk here, so it's rather dark. There's Scandinavia somewhere up there. Okay, we're below a thousand kilometers, so I need to address the, the incoming atmosphere. So the way this is done, oh, you can see the night lights. That looks like uh, Greece. Yes, uh, the night lights are beginning to uh, to come into view down there. Okay, so I don't want this video to be too long, but basically what happens is the way an aero brake is done is it's like sticking your hand out the window. Okay. Imagine that you're on a car on the freeway doing about 110 kilometers per hour and you want to slow down So you open a parachute. That's literally what we're doing except our parachute is this We face the wind so that the wind smacks against the spacecraft slowing it down and that's how it's done And we want to slow down some but not all This is a, uh, a perfect view um, if you wanted to view Europe. Uh, have just about everything on here.
from Volgograd all the way to um, the Atlantic coast. Okay, 10x again. And so how do we know um, where exactly we want to be? Angle of attack between 85 and 90 degrees. And hopefully I won't lose control this time. Um, but the Delta Glider is stupid and doesn't have all of the things that I need, which doesn't help. So we need to turn on to service, keep an eye on the dynamics, uh, the dynamic pressure. We're coming down quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and close the radiator now. And what we're going to do now is we're going to drift into the atmosphere. We're going to slow ourselves down. This time I want the atmosphere to impact us. Uh, we're going to slow down. And then... Uh, And once we've slowed down enough, I'm going to say, okay, stop, and then we're going to uh, accelerate back up again. Radiator retracted. Okay, so uh, we're ready for aero braking now. We're on regular time. Uh, this is going to come quickly. Uh, remember I said interface. Uh, it will indeed be an interface. So I'm moving to 85 degrees now. I'm going to turn the AOF control services on, pitch, uh, go full up, and be ready to apply any and all um, aerodynamics that I need to in order for us to remain aloft in this position. So, wow, we've actually broken 11 kilometers per second. That's about 24,000 miles per hour. So we're going to get a real interface when we hit the atmosphere. You're just going to hear a not not entirely, but it's going to be it's going to be fast. And it's going to go away fast. We'll have a dropout in orbit because we won't be going down to the surface. Um, we're not yet slowing down. Ah, now we're beginning to get perturbed. We're going to have to be on our guard to fight this. Okay, here it comes. We're arrow braking now. We're slowing down. And we're not going to be concerned with this acceleration because I can't do anything about it because there's no center of gravity shifting. Okay, here it is. You can hear the atmosphere now. I'm actually going to switch to the surface, uh, and I'm going to shift my, oh great, don't you dare lose control, Ugh. Wow, we're actually at um, periapsis already. I'm going to open my arrow brake because, ah, son of a. All right, so now, uh, now I'm going to try and pitch down before we leave the atmosphere. I can't stand. There's just no way. There's no way to control this thing. It drives me crazy. We've lost it. But we did some arrow breaking. I am so happy that this is the next to the last tutorial that I'll be doing in this spacecraft. I hate this spacecraft. I used to like it a lot. I hate it now. And I hate it because it's just not feasible. So I'm just wildly spinning now, um, because I'm safe in the atmosphere. I'm just trying to do whatever I can to slow down now. 
I don't care uh, about the air because we're going back up again. So here's 90 kilometers again. Uh, and actually, I need to I need to address this very quickly. We're still moving fast, and I need to end it. So what we're doing now is a retrograde burn. We're slowing down to orbital velocity so that we remain in low Earth orbit where we are now. Okay, we're going to return the pitch pressure to off. So we did do some braking. We broke about uh, 2,000 miles per hour by doing that. Um, if I had not lost control of the craft, we probably would have gotten about um, 2,000 uh, meters per second instead of 1,000 meters per second, which would have been a lot better. Uh, let's. We're up now, so we can open the radiator again. And we're going to keep an eye on our ground track here, uh, which looks good right now, but it's going to shift around, so that's going to suck. Uh, we're starting to run low on fuel, but um, well, we haven't been very uh, good with efficiency uh, so far. So. Radiator deployed. Okay, uh, we're there now. So I'm going to pause the video now and figure out what we need to do so that I can land at Cape Canaveral next orbit. Okay, the first thing we need to do now is lower the inclination. So this is a descending node. We're trying to lower the inclination, which means we go up to 90 degrees. And now we burn until the inclination drops. This time, unlike the calculations we were doing earlier, I'm going to wing it on the uh, the re-entry because there's no way to, to really calculate it. Um, and personally, the only real way to do this well is um, that's good enough. We can turn if, if we need to anymore. Uh, I'm getting aggressive with the spacecraft when it comes to re-entry, so we're going to use a steep angle right here. This is a really steep angle. We're going to use that as our re-entry angle, and then hopefully we'll make it to the Kennedy Space Center. Okay, so we'll come off of autopilot and go up to 100 times uh, normal time. We're going to go up to the um, up to the apogee. And I want to do a little bit of a um, 
Actually, I think we're all right in terms of the angle. That's going to change a little bit, but okay, let's 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 use our last little bit of fuel on uh We'll, we'll use the last fuel on the, uh, on a planar alignment burn, because I, I really want to straighten that out some. So going back to 100 times. Ten times normal. We're trying to shrink it. We're at a uh, ascending node. So we're going to go down. And actually, I'm going to wait a little bit because these are um, eclip ecliptic nodes and I want equatorial nodes. Because we orbit around the equator, not the uh, ecliptic. So I'm going to go up to 10x now. We're just going to wait. Okay. That's good. Normal time and burn. I'm not wasting any more fuel. That should be enough to get us in the vicinity. Going off orbit minus, returning to prograde, and now we're going to prepare for descent and landing. Notice we're now orbiting, uh, and ever since we were, we have been orbiting uh, prograde. This is from west to east. The reason for that is so that when we hit the wind. We hit it at 17,000 minus 1,000 miles per hour instead of 17,000 plus 1,000 miles per hour. Big difference when it comes to temperature. Reentry angles and everything else. Let's close the air brake, by the way, for now. We're probably going to end up opening up it up again. Uh, we're going to come off of autopilot now and go back to 10x. And here is the Pacific Ocean. You can see we're coming down very quickly now. We have a very steep re-entry angle. But that is what I want. And so what I'm going to do now is my plan is to actually hold level horizon and try and, and re-enter that way, smack against the surface, and then once I catch the air, let's go ahead and quick save again, and then when I catch the air, I use that to pitch the nose down into the atmosphere like I did before. Okay, 200 kilometers, time to get ready for re-entry. So we're gonna go on to pitch, I'm going to bring up the um, surface. I'm going to go ahead and align to that. Pitch down so we can see the earth. And it is day, which means we're switching back to the red. And so now the great thing about um, re-entering during the day is the sky will change color and that tells us approximately how much air is in the atmosphere. And you'll see if you're doing it right and you're constantly losing altitude, the sky will be getting brighter. If the sky gets darker, you know that you're doing something wrong and you're going to be out of the atmosphere if you don't take care of the bouncing issues. We're coming down fast at about 165 kilometers. We're closing the radiator. Going to add a bit of zoom here so we can see the Kennedy Space Center. Um, we're going to prepare the uh, VORs for KS-135. 
ASCX. Radiator retracted. Okay, we're all set. Uh, we'll do HSI nav one nav two. Here is Mexico. That was fast because we're so low and, and moving quickly. Um, okay, map is all set. So we'll go ahead and switch off to the surface. Our vertical speed is coming down very quickly, which means we should not bounce so easily. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to level with the horizon. And we're going to hold this. Uh, an angle of attack of 10 degrees hopefully will, will do well against the stresses of the atmosphere. Here we come, 10 pascals. Give it a quick check of everything. Looks good looks good okay we are ready for re-entry and just in time we're at 95 kilometers we're coming down fast and hard should start uh, to get interface just below uh, 65 kilometers and if we're lucky dropout should be around uh, 1,500 to 2,000 meters per second. So in real life now, we'd be getting a communications blackout in about 30 seconds. And yeah, it can't keep up already. Ridiculous. Okay, here's interface. Slowing down. Oh, listen to that roar. That is amazing. And now watch as the sky color begins to change. There you can see now we're bouncing. As expected, I knew that would happen. That's why I'm early. So what we're going to do now is come off of the level horizon. Oh shoot, I did not want to do that. We're going to turn. Ah, and the bounce wasn't as bad this time, which is good. I need to start turning though. we've gone ballistic. We're going to um, go all the way up uh, out of the atmosphere until we fall down again. And now we're coming back out of the atmosphere as expected. So that's all the turn we're going to get this time around. Let's 
So very soon we'll max out again and then we'll fall back in. And this time I'm going to keep my wings uh, tilted like this and we should slice through the atmosphere. And while we're doing that, I'm also going to take the opportunity to turn as well. Okay, I'm opening the uh, brake again because this stupid thing, we bounced again. We bounced too much. Again. So I'm going to turn against here, and then kill off our vertical speed with a little bit of an engine burst. Way too high. Okay, so we're going to start this with pitch down. Um, not looking good so far. We're actually still out of the atmosphere. Uh, I don't think we're going to make it to Cape Canaveral. We just bounced too far. It's stupid craft. I can't stand it. I'm going to spend what little fuel I have left trying to make us go down as fast as possible. Okay. Well, now we've done all we, all we can do. All we can do now is just sit here and wait for the atmosphere to come up again. And then we're going to have to make a crazy 180 as soon as, as soon as we get to the atmosphere. And if we're lucky, we'll bounce back again. Okay, we're finally slowing down again. But we're also over Cape Canaveral too, which doesn't help. And now we're going back over the Atlantic Ocean. So we're going to do a lot of elevator pitch trim up, which will uh, make us turn more. I despise the spacecraft. This, this this isn't even like last time. This is actually worse. The distance here is 700 kilometers already. We're still at almost full orbital speed. Last time when we were here, we were on the ground already, or at least close to it. I'm going to control the vertical acceleration using the wings this time. Okay, we're finally turning. pressure off the joystick when we get to uh, about 
three G is 30 meters per second square. We're going to have to start releasing the pressure. I'm actually going to see if we can bounce now by. Uh, getting the vertical speed to go up. Because if we're lucky, we can actually do a reverse bounce. It's amazing all this fuel we're burning just to turn around in the uh, reaction control system. some of the scramjets which are going to be useful. out of the atmosphere so that we slow down less. I'm actually purposefully trying to bounce out now. as long as before so I'm gonna use the scramjets to get back no use seeing that because we've seen the tutorial so I'm going to stop the video and bring it back once we get to the now. right so that didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would um, I forgot we're still moving at about 4,500 miles per hour I'm at a stable configuration right now you can't see it but I have the um, altitude autopilot on right now. It's keeping me level here. And uh, the scramjets are also on. And they are powerful enough right now to keep me stable at Mach 6.7. So now I'm going to come off of the autopilot and uh, we're going to prepare to drift down whoops, to the surface. Okay, I now have a uh, direction to the bearing. So we're going to 
to go ahead and turn now towards it. And I'm going to turn off the scramjets now. So we're just gliding in now. That's why they call it the Delta Glider. Uh, and we're going to begin... Um, going to begin uh, the last stage of the re-entry process. And we're going to fully enter the atmosphere. We're still at about 113,000 feet, so we're still very high up. Uh, evident because you can still see um, the color of many stars and even nebulas as well. Attitude off. So we're also going to go on to full um, pitch control now. the runway down there. So you can go ahead and open the air brake now. It will start slowing down again. I've neglected to look and see what the glide rate is on this craft. Uh, it's obviously a lot more than the XR2 is. If we were in the XR2, we'd be on the ground by now. I'm just so happy that there's only one more tutorial of this stupid craft. And it's an easy one. It's Earth to the Mars. I said the Mars. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's Earth to Mars. And even though that sounds hard, it's actually quite easy. And I'm not, I'm not going to mess up and, and be like, oh, yeah, I, I was wrong. It's not actually, trust me, it's easy. I'm going to activate a new mod, which you haven't seen yet. Uh, but we're actually going to use that for the flight. And it does almost everything you need to, it, 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 it it's like flying for dummies. There, there's no reason in fact, there's no excuse for not arriving at Mars other than, right, than running out of fuel because the thing tells you everything you need to know. So we're now below 2,000 miles per hour and uh, we're at about... 85,000 feet. The stars will begin to disappear when we get into the mid-70s. Uh, which, in kilometers... about 23 kilometers. I'm amazed that we have no signal from the ILS yet. And I'm going to hope that's because we're so high. Let's 
turn a little bit faster. I don't want to spend all day on this tutorial. I wouldn't be surprised if it's two hours long now. Or you're watching part two of a two-part episode. Okay, so we're at about mm, 65,000. You can see almost all of the stars have disappeared now. The sky is beginning to get brighter. Generally, I would come out of dropout right here, but of course we're in this crap craft, so of course not. And still I'm amazed that we have no signal yet from the, uh, the thing. It's a little bit weird. Alright, so it's going to be a long time, so I'm starting to use 10x through the atmosphere so that we can end the tutorial quicklier. Quicklier, that's not a word. Not at least in the English language. I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, subsonic, but yes, if I add a little bit of scramjet, I can actually get a little bit of a boost. Which I actually need right now a little bit of. 10x, 10x. 10x, 10x. Okay. 10x, 10x, 10x. Jeez. You are cleared to land. Finally. Okay. Cut the scramjets. Twenty-five hundred. They're actually still working. It's surprising. Put the gear down. Gear down. And I'm gonna have to restart the video. Okay. Good. We're ready for landing now. One thousand. I do have a little bit of fuel that I need left, or that I have left to uh, five hundred use if we need it. Four hundred. Three hundred. Yeah, we're probably gonna. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. be really gentle on our landing gear since we kind of messed it up last time. Idle brakes. Okay, and I'm not going to keep you any longer. Figure out how to shut your own craft down. I'm Dr. Aeronautics and this has been the Moon Tutorial. We have gone to the moon and safely returned. I'm happy about that. Let's get some fresh oxygen in this bird. Yeah, so join me next time for my tutorial to Mars. Hatch open. And we're finally going to upgrade to the XR2. Thank God. I will see you guys next time. Bye.